Let's just roll. All right, folks, <clears throat> we're back in the lab. We're back in the studio. This is the Captain's Law Podcast. I'm your host, Rob, home of your sports, current events, and DMV community news. What's happening this evening? What's happening to all my listeners? What's up to everybody on the live, on the IG live? Get with it. I ain't going to say every Monday night, but uh, I, I'm going to stop saying every because I'll be lying to y'all. So I'm just going to say I'll be doing lives from time to time. We're going to leave it there. Uh, topics for the night, man. It's going to be NBA Finals games one and two recap. Shannon Sharp leaves Undisputed and Fox Sports 1. That's for my sports, for my current events, uh, new Spider-Man movie review, and for my DMV community news. What the fuck was that loud boom? Uh, before we get started, man, make sure you share, subscribe. Tell somebody the Patreon is out, man. I'm looking for my shipmates. All that information is in the bio. Click the link tree. Get with a player. Anyway, let's get into it. That was the bell if y'all didn't hear that on the live. Uh, so I missed game one. I don't know where I was at. I seen about half a game two. I seen, I've seen all I need to see to make a uh, analysis of what's going on. Just going to do the stats real quick. Game one, uh, Nuggets won 104-93. Joker had 27 points, 10 rebounds, 14 assists, triple dub. Jamal Murray had 26 points, 10 assists, double-double. And uh, Porter had 14 points, 13 rebounds, double-double. And uh, as you can see, you, you hit them assists, 14 assists, 10 assists. Where are we going with this? I'm going to say Nuggets in six off Bucks. Um, then you got on the Miami side, Jimmy Butler, 13.7 rebounds. Bam out of bio, 26 points, 13 rebounds. And Gabe Vincent, 19 points. So you, you already know how that was going. I ain't hit shit about no assists. So that's an automatic L in the finals. Um, it's a cut and dry game, man. Uh, yo, the Nuggets was getting everybody involved. The bench was putting up some buckets. They were strapping up on D. Then, you know, the, the flop game was strong. And um, they ended up smashing them the first game. But game two, Miami won. 111-108. I thought the Nuggets was going to come back. The Nuggets was was getting it in, but, uh, you know, just fell short at the end. I didn't think they was going to lose one at home, but that's uh, NBA Finals basketball. So, uh, in that game, Joker had 41 points, 11 rebounds, double-double. Jamal Murray had 18 points, 10 assists. That's really it as far as any notable highlights. And then when you go to Miami, you had Jimmy Buckets had 21 points, 4 rebounds, 9 assists. Kevin Love, who started... Six points, 10 rebounds. Mm, 10 rebounds by the geezer. Bam Adebayo had 21 points, 9 rebounds. And gave Vincent again 23 points. So it's just like this. It's lopsided. Either your role players is – look, let me tell you right now. That's what's going to win the finals. The notable players, your Jokers, your Murrays, your Jimmy Butlers, your Tyler Heroes if he was playing, your Bam Adebayos, they going to get their points. All right, they're gonna score regardless, but them role players are the ones who are gonna bring the championship home. I've I've said this shit like twenty times. You cannot win the team. You can't win a championship with one player or two player or three players. Them role players got to be in there too. You got to have at least five or six people that's gonna give you some buckets and be on the defensive side. So that's what you got. You got Nuggets. A lot of assists, good defense, they win. Then you got Miami. A lot, a lot of assists, a lot of bench, a lot of bench production, 
You know what I'm saying? Good defense. And they win. That's what it's that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna be like this. It's gonna be like this. Again, I didn't think the Nuggets was really gonna take one. I didn't think Miami was gonna take one in Denver. Because the next two games is in Miami. So now it's like, mm, I'm curious to see how this is gonna go. You know, is are the Nuggets still gonna be able to keep that momentum? Um, as good as Joker is, he's not gonna be scoring no damn 40 points a night. If if he scored 40 points, what is it? They play Wednesday. If he got to score another 40 points and if he got to put a triple-double up and the rest of his team not giving him no production like they should on Wednesday, he going to be gassed out for the next game. So hopefully if he do that, they win. So um, I'm still going with Nuggets in six, though. I just I just think they're just the more complete team. Uh, more complete team. Yoke is just – Logan gets some easy-ass basic – he like, he like the white Tim Duncan out there, Joy, giving you basic buckets. You know what I'm saying? You're doing a little flopping, too, just, you know, the little patented wipe-your-face joint. But I'm going with Nuggets in six, man. What we got next? Bing. I seen this coming. I just didn't know. Hold on. Let's see in the comments. DJ Too Fresh says, looks rigged. Michael Porter was sat for no reason. I agree. Listen, you already know. I've been said this. I've been said that the NBA been rigged for the longest. Like, let's let's keep it a buck right now. Does it or does it not feel weird that LeBron is not in the finals? Let me know. And I, I'm I'm not even I'm I'm LeBron out. I'm I'm ready for the next wave of players to come in. But don't it feel weird? It almost feel like it, it's not even the NBA finals because. LeBron and the, the traditional people who they, they keep wanting, your, your LeBron, your Kevin Durant's, your Golden States, because they're not in it. Two two teams, one team ain't never been, and another team ain't been since LeBron. In, in the NBA Finals, it almost feel like it's not even not even like real basketball. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and I love basketball, but it, it don't feel, it don't feel like, like, if it was LeBron and them, they'd be hyping this shit up, man. They'd be hyping it up. It's like they just they just get on there, whatever. What's my man? Van Gundy, get on that joint and um, talk his little shit, contradict everything the NBA got to do. Charles Barkley, get on there and, and talk his shit, and, and that's it. I don't know. May, maybe because it's just I haven't really, really been watching the whole thing, but I do think it's rigged, bro. I think the NBA been rigged for a minute. I, I don't know how much how much money coming out of these uh, these max – Max contracts, but some of that shit is uh, is is for them players. Says there's no excitement this year. Nah, bro, it don't it don't feel exciting. It doesn't. And you know what? So another reason why I say that is because you know I didn't I didn't get to see any uh, Denver Nugget games. I didn't really see that many Miami games either. I mean, I don't know. I I don't have an NBA league pass, so I just watch what's going on. I watch the Wizards get smashed. And then I watched them play. I watched Boston and Philly and Brooklyn and uh, the late night games. It's Golden State. It's goddamn the Clippers. It's Lakers. And it's Nuggets if you can catch them. But they don't they really be showing them games like that, man. So I, I think they need to do a better job of, of these primetime games. It can't just be the Lakers. The Lakers had so many primetime games this year. And they was playing like some shit. I'm like, bro, like. But they're playing like shit, though. Well, why why y'all keep putting them on the TV? Because it's Brian. That's okay, though. It's, that's, that's for another day. Anyway, Shannon Sharp put his two-week notice in. If you think about it, count that shit up. When, when, he, when he said it, it was like last week, right, the other day? Bro, if this shit goes seven days, seven games, it's like two weeks. So he put a two-week notice in on Skip Bayless' ass. Um, they was on the show together for, what, six, seven years? Uh, it, it, it really, I think it really stings, man, because they've been, they've been them for so long. Like even people who don't watch Skip and Shannon know, Skip, 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 Skip. Everybody know that shit. Everybody knows Shannon. Shannon Sharp's personality is out of this world. For someone who, you know, can come with, with no journalism, no journalism background. And, uh, he said after the finals, he's done. That's like two weeks, bro. That's a two week notice. DJ Too Fresh said, no, he said, after the finals, he's done. That's like a two-week notice, bro. That's like two weeks. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a two-week notice. But, uh, you know, a combination between uh, Skip Bailey's taking the shot at him, pretty much comparing 
uh, Shannon's career to Tom Brady. I think that I think that stung more than the uh, uh, what's up, Cuzzo? I think that stung more than the um, the Demar Hamlin controversial tweet thing. You know, I think that stung more. Now, granted, um, I don't think Skip's tweet was bad. I just think that when you in that position, when you up here, when your job is is to report sports, sports news on the dime, when you're tweeting, bro, that shit got to be on point. When I, if I'm reading your tweet, that shit need to mean what it says. I shouldn't. It shouldn't be looked at, you know, two or three different ways, or will play off implications. Like, you could have just not said that, or you could have worded it, so it just meant what you meant. Like, yeah, I, 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 I really care more about his health in the situation, but this does, this, this does uh, uh, have effect on the playoffs. Not, not I, I don't know word for word what he said, but, like, they jumped, you know, they jumped on his ass quick about that. And even, you know, when, when Shannon came on, you know, Shannon took the day off, Unc said, you know, I, I need a, a, a mental health day. And he came back on and he spoke on it immediately. And and he was just like, you know, I thought Skip would take the tweet down. Of course, Skip Skip is Skip. You know what I'm saying? The, the one thing I got to give, give credit to Skip, Skip don't, ain't backing down for nobody. He not bending for nobody. I can respect that. But let at least let the man get his comment out. So at this point, Shannon like, damn, can I, can I at least finish saying what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree in the comments. His his comment was way was just way too soon. I agree. I agree. Um, but at that point, I'm just like, yeah, they done. You know what I'm saying? Because, and I, I think Shannon did a good job to play it off after that. But I mean, I don't know. I, I read body language and I can just tell when, when somebody had the job and they don't want to be there. So he rolling into the, into the, uh, into the, at, at game six, when the Nuggets take it, Uncle Shay Shay is gone and his podcast. Club Shay Shay podcast is gone too. That's a part of Fox Sports One as well. They they're gonna they're gonna buy him out, and he's gonna be done. I, I wish I knew what his how much his contract well not how much but how long his contract was. They was they got about seven years, so I'll, I'm assuming maybe it was ten years, maybe about three left. The chat says the comment was a little insensitive, especially to that football fraternity. Skip was being Skip, but he's always been Skip. I agree, he's always been Skip. I mean, think about when he was with Stephen A. They was going back and forth, going back and forth. Speaking of Stephen A, Stephen A talking about something. Oh, if, if you want to come to, uh, 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 what was it, first take shit. Man, pff, that that should be quick. That would be a one and done. Ain't, ain't no way that you're going to have Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith sitting at the same table. Stephen A can barely handle goddamn J.J. Reddick and Perk. So, nah. Common says, we saw two almost die two weeks in a row. Nobody gave a shit. Nah, bro. DJ Too Fresh, you a lie on that, bro. Because I was one of the main advocates saying that I don't think he should play football no more. And I was one of the main advocates saying when he had the first concussion that he should have sat out. And I thought that it was, I thought it was a little too quick for him to be coming back onto the field. So nah, bro. What? I mean, maybe I mean nobody above my level. You know what I'm saying? But I was one of the main people on my podcast. Like, man, he shouldn't he shouldn't even be playing, bro. Like, not the way he looking, losing his balance, his equilibrium off and all that other shit. No. Hell no. So my question is this. What's next? What's next for Shannon Sharp? And where can I send my resume? Just let me know. You, you, you got it. Hey, Shannon, Unk, you got a Gmail. What you, what you got? You got Dropbox. I mean, what you you got a birdie with, with the thing on his leg. Let, let me just shoot you the resume. Let me just show you what I got. Check me out. Listen, if Unk called me, I'm gone. Chat says, so what I'm saying is it was football as normal. I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. It was football as normal. But, bro, like, to have to, to have effects like that of a concussion, you know what I'm saying? Like, didn't have one right back to back. Bro, he... Mm -mm. Now, now maybe the severity of it, you know what I'm saying? The world wasn't like, oh, shit. As much as somebody, like, literally just falling out on the field and having to be revived. I mean, I, I'm, I, I don't want to compare, you know, the severity of which one was worse. But they both were just equally as bad. But did, did Skip go and tweet some cryptic shit about the concussions? I mean, let me know. 
If if he did, you know what I mean. Somebody somebody DM it to me, you know what I'm saying, and I'll read it. And then, okay, I, I agree with you. I don't. I gotta have information. I can only go by what I personally saw. You know what I'm saying. I was actually on Twitter when I seen the tweet myself, and I had commented. I was like, Skip, that's some bullshit, bro. That was my comment. Um. So my thing is, so Shannon Sharp go and he get his own show. I think he been doing it long enough. I think he has the background that he can get his own show, but. When? What time would it air? See, that's the thing, bro. Like that little that sweet spot between like seven a.m. Well, I don't know who on at seven a.m. And I think Colin Cowherd come on at twelve. That's like that's that's the prime time. And then you got everybody else who like two, three in the afternoon speak with Joy Taylor and them. But I'm like, I mean, I ain't watching. I'm not watching it at at uh uh you know two three in the afternoon. Chat says no one gives Skip the same energy when he stands behind black players and tackle black issues for as long as he has. You might be right, but I mean, if the man put his two weeks in, he put his two weeks in. I mean, you know, you got you got to call it what it is. Chat says he he weak. He not built for the trenches of media. Who? Which who? Shannon. Shannon is a little emotional, so you don't you don't think he can make it? Y'all, do y'all think that y'all think Shannon Sharp can go out here and create his own show, and it can it can compete with the the other current shows that's out right now? I I, I think it's gonna take him a while, and I think it, it's really gonna be important to who compliments him. Like if Shannon Sharp was if Shannon Sharp was to go start a show right now, who would be a good person to compliment him? This and this has got to be someone who's not gonna agree with him all the time. I was thinking maybe Chris Broussard, but mm, I don't know. I don't only say that because they've already worked together. But I think Chris Broussard is already in, already in uh, uh, too much, too much stuff. He says, "Chat says, nah, Shannon gonna get big views by himself. Shannon can do whatever he wants and be successful because he has a personality and the backing of other celebrities." I agree. But you can't see it's different. Like I'm sitting in here, I'm and I'm, I'm by myself, but I'm talking to the chat though. You know what I'm saying? Besides that, if it was just me, I'd just be looking at the ceiling, talking to the cameras, and going. But when you talking about, I mean, even Colin Cowher, who kind of is a one man show, he even has a complimentary in there. He had Joy Taylor, and even though she wasn't really saying too much, and he had the other other gentleman who still be in there. So my thing is, uh, he got to have somebody. Now it don't it don't have to be a big name person. This this could be an opportunity for another up and coming uh, media personality to come on there and uh, make their make their name. But uh, he gotta have somebody. So I mean I think at this point he should take a break, take about a month just to whoosh, just relax. I know he he made a little post. He was in the garden uh, planting shit and all this. I was like I mean I I, I guess you planting something something gonna grow out. You know, but I know it take a minute for that shit. That shit don't come out the ground the next day. So make sure you take a little break. Get your mental health in check. Get the skip off you. And uh, we're going to be waiting because, I mean, I, I, I fool with Shannon. He he know the information. He do his research. And, and he, he got his own personality. I mean, that's that's hard to come by. It's a lot of people that's on TV that just be be saying anything. And it's like, it's one thing if you're going to say everything, but if you got that spunk behind it, I'm still going to watch it even though, like Perkins, I get Kendrick Perkins, Kendrick Perkins be saying absolutely anything. But because of Perkins, even Richard Jefferson is, I think that, I think he's good at what he's doing. He's hilarious. They got a good little cat, cast, Malika Andrews, all them in there. So I'm fooling with them. <clears throat> uh, anything else for Uncle Shannon that we're going to move on? <clears throat> Let's get the chat a second. Man, he can put Club Shay Shay on TV if he wants. You know, he could do that. But then, so the thing with podcasts, man, is when you put podcasts on TV, especially if you're going to put it on regular TV, now you got you to gotta watch it. Like, he'd have had Lord Duvall on there, you know what I'm saying, smoking on the joint. So it's like when you, when you go that route, then you got to kind of change up. The reason why people do podcasts is so they can say and do whatever the fuck they want. That's why you do it. I could have been saying, well, you know what, man? I feel like I feel like I can go on the radio. Let me go up Sirius XM and see, and see if I can get an internship, you know what I'm saying, doing some uh, talking or, or go up to 
95.5 or 93.9. But then I couldn't really, I could be myself, but not my my true self. I can't get on there and curse and flame people and, and talk about how, you know, how this controversial shit I don't like, like how bad a driver y'all are out here in the DMV. I can't do that. So it's good, it's good to keep it out. And, you know, whatever, whatever he brings in for his podcast, it's his money. You know what I'm saying? Once you start signing with all this and signing that people getting the cut, now you you out here doing extra shit and you not even you not even really reaping the benefits. But um we're gonna be standing by though, man. Shannon, I need to see you in my resume though. So let's move on. So now we on we on the DMV community news. We done with we done with skipping Shannon. We done. We on the, we on to the community news section. So yesterday I'm standing outside, man. I had some folks over. We was getting ready to record something. And I just heard boom. So I'm like, whoa, shit. That shit sounded close. I thought my neighbor's house had got blown up or something. So next thing you know, I'm looking at my Of course, I pulled my phone out because, you know, the ring alerts. If you, if you got the ring, ring doorbells or cameras on your house, you know the alerts. When everybody asking, loud boom, what was that? Probably some old lady. But this time, it was about 20, 25 notifications. So I'm like, damn. That's a lot of motherfucking people. Like, what's going on? So, go in the joint, check my phone, and it says uh, that there were some jets that went goddamn Sonic Speed, Mach, Mach 5, uh, Sonic Boom, whatever. Guile, Sonic Boom ass. And they, because there was a, a, a small Cessna jet flying over DC. So, I'm like, damn. I'm like, if, 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 if the Jets had to make that loud a sound to get there, that means they must have got there fast as shit. They probably got there in less than a minute, bro. So then I start thinking because I'm looking at the news today. So I'm like, okay. But they showing Andrews Air Force Base. So I'm like, did the Jets leave from Andrews? Because I'm like, my thing is this. I just feel like the way they're explaining it, it, it. It's a lot of holes in the story, right? It's a lot of holes in the story. But So you telling me that. The, pl- the Jets was at Andrew. This, this this is my assumption. I mean, correct me if it flew from somewhere else. You telling me these Jets was at Andrew's Air Force Base. And you telling me that the Jet took off and just boom, sonic boom that fast. Don't, don't, don't they gotta, don't that shit gotta build up a little bit? First of all, which way is is the tarmac facing? Is it facing the direction that they going? Because I'm a, this is my thing. The only way I'm believing this is you telling me that these jets flew up. And then they just they just kind of went went back. So if we if we in uh, uh what's that Allentown Road, them motherfucker jets went down Route Four somewhere towards towards damn Chesapeake Beach, and they turned around and then they smacked that motherfuckers up the road. That's the only way that you able to get to that speed that quick. And unless we we got some crazy shit going on today, we don't know about. Anyway, that's the one thing that don't make sense to me. So they get there. You know what I'm saying? Come to find out, apparently the, the pilot was unresponsive. He was passed out. And it was like three other people on there. Bro, you got a YouTube F-16s. Don't tell me what I got a YouTube, all right? <laughs> don't tell me what I got a YouTube, too fresh. I just want to know. Like, I'm going to look it up because I just don't think that them motherfuckers is really getting up to speed that quick. Chad says, I seen the story said the pilot was unconscious and they was guiding it. I don't believe that, bro. I don't believe that. So, because they talking about the plane crashed somewhere in, in, in the sticks in Virginia, and they said that the plane was charred up, and and, it, and you couldn't make out shit. So, no bodies, all, all the bodies fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I think they shot the motherfucker down. I think they shot it down, bro. Like, at, th- think about it like this. Granted, this is just speculation on me. Don't believe nothing I'm saying. I think they shot it down because my thing is we don't we don't know how long this drain has been at a slow de- slow decline. We don't know how long that they was trying to say, hey, 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 what the fuck y'all doing? You in the wrong place. You in the wrong place to pull up to that joint. And I don't know. Like, it was like we don't know what part it. Where was it at in D.C. when the Jets pulled up on them? You know what I'm saying? Because my thing is, if this joint is slowly floating somewhere in the vicinity of the Pentagon or something, I mean, 
you might have to you might have to shoot that joint down and ask questions later. So I don't know, bro. I mean, it, it's a couple of holes in the story. Maybe maybe, maybe we'll never get told. We'll never uh, uh uh we'll never get told a true story. But you know, my spouse is is under the impression that that joint got shot down. I don't know. She she sounds like she kind of making sense. Um. But yeah, I mean, they, bro, if you gotta get there that fast, bro, like you gotta, you gotta get there. How much time you got? They played the emergency transmission. Send me the clip, Jizzy. Send me the clip. I'm about to make you the fucking moderator. Um. But yeah, so everything is gone. The joint, the, the joint crashed. Everybody's dead. That shit was crazy though. You, know, I think that the most crazy part about it was like, well, I know DC is a nose fly zone. Period. So, I, I think about it. I ain't never, I ain't never seen no planes flying over unless it was them shits coming over there by the airport. I ain't never seen no plane just flying the fuck around. But um, my thing is, bro, that explosion was loud. That's I'm, I keep calling it explosion. That sound was loud, bro. Like, I was in, I'm in buoy. Telling me these jets was in Andrews. How many miles is that? That's about 15 miles. You telling me them shit's loud like that? <sighs> Hell no. Nah. Just imagine. Imagine with the people who live right outside the base. Motherfucking eardrums probably blown the fuck out. <laughs> oh, man. Oof. I had to go to therapy, bro. If I lived in an old house in Suitland and them motherfucking jets sonic boom through there like that. Oh, nah, bruh. Oh, no, no, no. I, I had to be going to emergency room. My motherfucking eardrums be bleeding. But um, that's all I got for that, man. So lastly, 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 telling y'all right now, don't bootleg it. Go see it. Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse, 5.5 out of 5. Clap it up. Hey, 5.5 out of 5, bro. It's not up for debate. That movie was great. The soundtrack was a little mid. Y'all sight the soundtrack, though. Y'all, y'all was sight. Just look, just because it's Metro booming, that don't mean everything booming. That shit was mid booming. Uh, the movie was good, bro. It was a lot going on, a lot of action, though, but. Between the storyline, between you know bringing other characters in, I, I won't tell y'all too much. I'm gonna tell. I'm not gonna tell you the movie. I ain't gonna do that. It's fresh. If it was next week, I would have told y'all the whole shit. But good movie. We went to see that joint at the Alamo Draft House. That's the uh, that's one of the movie theaters. They got one in DC. They got one in Crystal City. Um, you can you know you it's a theater where they got the recliner chairs. You can order food. We just we just started going to those because it's like shit. We are gonna have to eat anyway. Let's we could just save some time. Just get some little chicken wings in there. So we went there. Um, the movie was good, man. Very very good. Uh, some emotional scenes. Like I said, excellent fight scenes. Excellent storyline. Excellent plot twist. The ending. You're not gonna see it coming. Uh, great movie, dog. Great movie. I didn't realize that is is Miles Morales so he 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 black and Spanish, or is he Spanish? Let me know. Is is he black and Spanish? I, I'm just well. I'm gonna say he he black and Spanish because dad is black and mom is Hispanic. So yeah, he black and Spanish. Okay. Great movie, man. Y'all got to go see that shit, bro. Do not bootleg it. I know when I'm up, I'm gonna go to the barbershop on Friday and they're gonna have that shit up on the screen. DJ Too Fresh, you got mixed reviews? You don't like it? I, I, explain to me why it's not a five out of five. What would you give it? How long should we have to wait for the blank? It's got to be less than 1.5. Ah, yeah, that's a good question, bro. See, and, that, and that's the thing there. If they're going to do that without giving it away, if they're going to do that, then, you know, I'm thinking a year. I, I think it, it can't be no longer than a year for the turnaround. Um, because anything less than that, you're gonna have you're gonna have to go back and see the one that just came out before they come out with the next movie. So, but it's gonna be a good month of June. You got uh Transformers coming out, 
Ain't y'all, y- are y'all tired of Transformers? I don't know. I I just I I keep going to see him, and I just I just outside of the Bumblebee movie, which was good, it was a separate con- whole different set of people that did that. Uh, I'm gonna go transform it out. Ultimus Prime, he's saying less and less. Though I guess the guy who play him, he must be getting too old to be doing this shit. They need to replace his voice. Send Big G up there. He he can be fucking Ultimus Prime. Give me like Autobots. What do he say? Roll out. <laughs> I, I look. I, I've been done with the Fast and Furious. You know. You know what's funny about the, the Fast and Furious thing, man. Uh, they interviewed Ludacris, and they was like, "Why you keep making these movies?" And his response was something I would have said. He was like, "Why keep making the movies? Like these movies are making a billion dollars each time." I, he's like, "I don't give a shit how bad they are. He gonna keep making them." Got a point. Hmm. But that's all I got, man. This is episode 140. Uh, make sure you share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Patreon is in the bio. It's in the link tree. Click that shit. I know, I know the link tree can be a little annoying to uh, press. But go ahead and press that shit, man. Fuck with your boy. And uh, have a good night. Cap out.